Don't panic about sequence of return risk. Now, this is an article from Morningstar that one of y'all has sent me. So, again, much obliged, my friends. Much obliged, kind sir. I salute you. For those about to rock fire, I salute you. Now, that was a great song. Was that Brian Johnson? That was, I think that was Brian Johnson, uh, not Bon Scott. Man, ACDC. Uh, such a good band. All right. Anyway, so we're going to read this. This is fantastic. A great piece. And uh, this is from uh, this lady here, pretty lady, Amy Arnott. And I wonder if she's married to Rob Arnott, because Rob Arnott is Research Affiliates, who uh, I've been a fan of for, for many, many moons. Um, but I couldn't, I looked him up briefly. I couldn't find, Rob's married with three kids. He lives in Florida. And it, I couldn't find out if, uh, if old Amy is married or not, if that's the same people. I don't know. Anyway, or maybe they're sisters, brothers and sisters, sisters. All right, anyway, so she says, both stocks and bonds are down this year, but the long sweep of history uh, provides some solace for recent retirees. Couldn't agree more. And the uh, what Obama said, the arc of history bends towards justice. <laughs> man, oh my goodness, Obama is so profound. I'm like, man, that's just, uh, just dumb. Look, George W. Bush, dumb. Obama's dumb. They're all dumb. Trump, dumb. Sniffy Joe dumb, but just come on. Let's not make it like the, the arc of history bends towards justice. I was like, oh. <laughs> All right, so Amy says, the, uh, the it's hard to escape negative drumbeat of market news. Market volatility has spiked up in recent months. Bonds are off to one of the worst starts in years, and stocks are rapidly approaching correction territory. Well, they're well beyond uh, correction. In fact, we hit a bear market yesterday. But it's not a full-fledged bear because you got to end the day uh, trading 20% less. So the S&P 500 hit the bear, and then they came back up to off the bear floor. But dead cat bounce? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, see, market commentators often tend towards hyperbole and alarmism. Yep. Uh, with both stocks and bonds selling off in tandem, the usually stalwart 60-40 portfolio is having its worst year since 1932. Uh, but while double meltdown in stocks and bonds is concerning, recent retirees can take some comfort in the historical record. If you purchase or sell shares, the timing of your returns is very important. This issue is particularly relevant during the first four year, first few years of retirement. And when you start making portfolio withdrawals, the value of your portfolio re reflects both market performance and cash outflows. Exactly which can be a double whammy during an extended market downturn. All right, so we're going to do a lesson from history. Let's start with the 1929 crash, the mother of all corrections. I wish you'd stop saying corrections. Let's say bears. Uh, let's see. The market went on to endure its worst sequence of returns ever in 1931 and 1932. And here's the S&P 500 basically down 43% in 1930. 25% in 1929 and 8% in 1931, another 8% in 1932. I mean, just it doesn't get much worse than that. All right, bonds though were up 4.6, 7.3, negative 2.1, and 9.8. Interesting. Deflation was the only saving grace as falling prices allowed retirees to cut back on spending and portfolio withdrawals. Again, very few people had access to the capital markets at that point, but the bonds were the saving grace. A 60-40 portfolio in 1929 was only down 3.2. In 1930, it was only down 12. In 1931, it was down 26.8. How is that down 26.8? I don't get that. The stock market is down 8.2. That doesn't make any sense. Hold on a second. Yeah, she got her numbers right wrong there. Um, that year, it should be negative 5.8. I'm not sure how she got negative 26.8. That's that's odd. So that was a, a typo for sure. And how do you do that is you take the 60% of the stocks, the 40% of the bonds. So 60% is 0.6, 40% is 0.4. It times it by their rate of return. In this case, it's negative 0.08 for stocks, negative 0.02 for bonds, 2% uh, and 8% respectively. That's 0 0.08, 0 0.02. And you times them together. So you got 0 0.6 times 0 0.08 equals negative 4.8 on stocks. So the portion of the portfolio that was in stocks was down 4.8%. The portion of the portfolio that was in bonds was down 0.8%, or, or basically, I should say, point, uh, yeah, 0.8%. And you times those together, you get five point, uh, what did I say, 5.8. So I'm not sure how she got, uh, 
or 5.6, 5.6. That, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but anyway, inflation was only 0. 0.6 in 229, and negative in 30, negative again in, in 31, and negative again in, 10, in uh, 32. So investors who retired right before the crash would have seen significant damage to their nest eggs. As shown in the graph below, though, an investor with a 100,000 portfolio in 1929 would have seen their, their value drop as low as 50,000 bucks by the end of 1932. All right. And some of those retirees might have lived long enough to see their portfolio recover, but that didn't happen until 1945. But check this out. Even taking 4% a year adjusted with inflation, you know, you didn't get back to, to 100,000 bucks until 1945, but you never ran out of money. Even taking 4% a year on the initial amount adjusted for inflation. The worst case scenario is right there. And then you came up, up, well, down, up, up. You see what I'm saying? You started gradually going back up. The 1973 and 74 bear market, the second longest bear market to date, would have been another bad time because then we had inflation right here. So you have stocks down 14% and 26% in 73 and 74. Bonds were up a little bit, not much. And so the 60-40 portfolio was down 7 or basically 8 and down 15 in 73 and 74. But on top of that, inflation of 8.7 and 12.3. But even here. 72, 73, you're down here to, you know, you had 200,000 bucks, you're down to, and so you, again, she's taking a 4% withdrawal adjusted for inflation. Does she say how much this is right here? Uh, by the time 1974, you would have lost about 30% in retirement savings by then in 1974, right there. And then it's just, I mean, you leveled off in, you know, in the Carter years, but then the Reagan and Clinton years, you boom. All right, and then we go down to 20, uh, the 2000s, hey buddy. The S&P 500 was down, down, down. Oh, but the bonds were up, up, up. So the S&P 500 was, uh, or the, the total of 60, 40, basically broke even in 2000, was down 3.5 in 2001, it was down 7.4 in 2002. Inflation was moderated, though, 3.4, 1.6, and 2.4. So here, if you're taking two, uh, 4% a year, and I guess she has uh, how much? Uh, we have 700000 in this year, so you're taking uh, 28000 a year. By the time 2002 hit around, you were down, uh, I can't see what that is, but it's 550000 bucks. So you're down, but then it came back up to even Steven, and then you're down in 2008, but you never ran out of money. Not even close with a 4% withdrawal. Um, could things get worse? The key takeaway is that d even during horrible market environments, Retirees have historically still be still been able to recover their lost wealth. Of course, it's not a given that both periods of sequence of returns are behind us. In fact, a lot of people say, well, the bonds got killed. Have you seen what the BND has done lately? Huh? So let's take a gander because bonds, while they got killed at the beginning of the year, are coming back strongly. Will that continue? I actually think so. We'll see if I can get my BND. And D. There we go. BND. All right, so there is, we'll go to year to date on BND. Let's go to the last month. So there's the last month on BND. So it went from down, but was that 75? Now we're back up to 76, uh, 76 and a half. So we're, we were down to 75.50. We've gained a dollar back per share on BND, and that's in the last month. Now we are in three months, we dropped, but we've already, we, we've already bounced off the bottom. I don't want to say significantly. I would never say that, but I mean, look, this last week we've made a, we've made some significant progress. The point is, the bonds typically uh, will get knocked around when the Feds are raising. The Fed has already raised. They've already said they're going to raise, so the bonds already seen the worst of it, in my opinion. So a 60-40 portfolio, Wellington and Wellesley uh, stocks and cash, it still should work just fine. I don't know. You don't know. You gotta be nimble. But I tell you, man, it's a whole lot easier to be nimble if you got no debt. All right, love your thoughts. See ya.